here we have real time Norton Summit. I've started this video at the start of the segment. So we're going up Norton Summit. We've got like a, about 50 riders. All right. Now I'm going to be dead last. And as riders get dropped, I'm just going to go around them. It's not the best strategy for the fastest time because you, once you're closing gaps, you're using up more energy. But I just want to give you, show you how to work the bunch on the climb, how to climb in the bunch. And uh, the, ideally, you want to be at the front. You want to be in the first five riders at all times because being at the back, when the gap opens, you have to go around and close it. But if you're in the front top five, you'd be all right. So the bunch is already starting to crack. We're doing maybe 400 watts right now. And you see everyone's cadence back here, pretty slow. And they're gonna get, look at that, the gap's already started opening. We're only 46 seconds in the climb and it's already splitting up like a broken boat. The, the Titanic is cracking in half. So I'm going around the riders and I'm sitting dead last. It's, as the riders get dropped, I'm going around them. And just see, so at all times on this, on this uh, video, I'll be a dead last rider most of the time, especially for the first 10 minutes anyway. Just to show you the cadences, things like that. So see that flashing light down the right? Uh, in Audax riding, the rule is you can't have a flashing light in a bunch. You have to have it on just solid state. And that way there's less distraction of the rider in front, rider behind the flashing. So when you see me in the bunch, I always have my light. Either turned it off in the bunch or I just have it on just solid state so there's no flashing. Because flashing almost give you an epileptic shock when you're trying to do 400 watts. So let's have a look at everyone's cadence. Grind, uh, spinning versus grinding. And that, oh, look at that, another gap's opened up, it's breaking up again. So you've got to really pay attention and close that gap as soon as it opens up. Because if you don't, the big gap gets in there. And when you're going this fast, you're going to lose that aero uh, drafting effect. And it's just, you can always go faster when you rule with other riders. You feed off their energy, uh, feed off everything else. So we're two minutes in. Right in the blue jersey, left grinding, he's not going to last very long. Because we're doing like 400 watts. And if, you're, if we're doing 400 watts and your cadence is 50, you're going to produce in so much fatigue, metabolites, lactic acid, hydrogen ions, etc. You're going to be popped. You're going to be popped pretty quick. Doesn't matter how, how good a ride you are. So if you can grind at that wattage, once you learn the spin, you'll be flying. You'll be flying. Um, someone said, can you call watts wallabies? Wallabies. So seven wallabies per kilo. Um, like we can do that in Australia. We'll call them wallabies, eh? That's a good term. So we're cruising up here. Look at everyone's cadence. Pretty good. Reasonably good. The guy on the right, I could, he could pick his cadence up a bit more. Because again, when your cadence goes under 80, you're producing a lot more fatigue metabolites. Look at green shoes there. Green shoes, he's got a good cadence there. It just, it just makes it easier. This is hard enough. Don't have to make it any, any harder. Um, spinning. Chris Froome, Lance Armstrong, even Jan Ulrich. Look at Jan Ulrich time trialling. His cadence is very high. It just produces more power. You can produce more power or the same power and hold that power longer if you're spinning at least 90 cadence. Passing riders on the left there. What, the, what do these Sele riders think of us in this big bunch flying up the mountain? They're, they must think, these guys are all an EPO or something. Because <laughs> we're, we're, we're passing... We're passing people like the standard still. A little gap open there. When the bunch is in a single file, you know it's going full gas. If it's still two abreast, it's moderate. But when it, when they're in the Tour de France, etc., when you see it f like strung out in one line, then they're going full gas, full gas. And when you're in the bunch, always pay attention to what's up the road. Have your fingers near your brakes, and avoid having your head down. Otherwise, you might get slam by a car coming down or you just might hit the rider in front of you and crash and it's a good way to learn the bunch is going uphill because if you do crash you're going to go on 25 30 k an hour so it's a lot safer than on the flat at 50 k an hour so learning the bunch learning how to ride a bunch is best on an uphill and be wary that leave enough gap between you and the rider in front because if they get out the saddle their back wheel is going to kick back and might take out your front wheel so you know, leave at least a half meter gap or just be to the side of them etc just pay attention where that front wheel, where your front wheel is and just be feathering your brakes again there's another gap look at that oh man there's gaps opening everywhere it's getting strung out now there's acceleration going on and so i'm just trying to close the gap as soon as possible and pay attention to what's on the road in front of me riders on my left cars coming down on the right gap city, baby. Gap city. 
so five minutes in, you can see the riders with the low cadence are not going to hold on at this power because it's just it's hard. Oh, it's hard, Yaka. It's hard. You getting dropped? No, I'm not getting dropped. Oh. I'm, I'm still, I'm still. This, I'm, this, the bikes, the cameras on my bike, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get dropped later on. Not, not this early. You drop those. Um, <laughs> if I'm getting dropped, who's filming? <laughs> Figsy, <laughs> Figsy. <laughs> so I've, so I've gone around the riders. That's I'm taking photos of Look, Greg. So I'm just going around here, and there's more. Ga oh, look at that! It's another acceleration. You can see that. Another acceleration. So we're moving up, moving up, moving up. And it's all about knowing what wheels to follow because some riders don't have the fitness, they're going to get popped soon. So if you sit on their wheel, you might get popped as well. So it's, when you ride the bunches, you'll learn what wheels to follow, etc. It's just an art. It's good fun, man. It's just, this is good fun. A bit of banter, a bit of banter in the bunch, a bit of trash talk, and everyone gets fitter. So that's all good. Don't take it personally. And you can see everyone's here. Everyone here is fucking lean. Everyone in this bunch is fit. You know? This is a fit fucking bunch. Fit motherfuckers. Uh, we're going up a climb here. The, the guy on the Alan Chalmont there, watch him later on. He was, uh, he, he shredded it up, tore it up. Laid down some wallabies, some wattage. And so they sort of sort of regrouped a bit here. You can see that again, the, the bunch is sort of, you know, two or three abreast. It means the pace is down a bit. It's just going a bit more cash. And it's going to get strung out again pretty soon. Right, so just, we're just holding on here, just holding on, getting ready for the next acceleration. It's a canyon bike, they're like canyon taking off, aren't they? Not, not a bad finish, the old canyons. Warranty's a bit low though. I still prefer my giant, but uh, the finish is quite nice. I think they're coming out of the giant factory anyway. But they're get, gaining popularity here in Australia. Past the night left. And now another acceleration coming on. You see the rider in the middle with the screen, black and blue kit, his cadence is very low. We're seven minutes in, and his cadence is gonna to be too low. He's gonna to get to pop very soon because the fatigue metabolites are gonna take over his legs, and they're gonna take over the brain and say, look, we can't do this anymore, slow it down. And here we go here, this is, this is where it's happened. I can see this guy's gonna get dropped, so I go around him straight away. And look at that, it's getting strung out. Look at the gaps opening in individual riders, there's gaps opening. So whoever's on the front, I can't see who's in the front, but they're stringing it out. <laughs> they're stringing it out. Another gap opening there, so we're trying to close it, doing our best to close it. Um, you really got to just focus on your breathing and relax the mind and just push the legs and let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. The more you let go, the faster you can go. So just let go mentally, let go physically and just fucking push the pedals, push that cadence, focus on your breathing, just let everything go. Uh, it's a bit of a meditation, absence of thought. Another gap open there. So I've got to, I know I've got to close that as soon as possible. So I'm probably doing 550 watts now, just trying to hold that down, 600 maybe, just to close it on. And that sapped my legs big time there. I paid for that. But it's good training, it's excellent training. This is, this, you can't get better training than this, because everyone's going full gas. In racing, people sort of save it for the sprint. But this time trial, everyone's going on full gas, all right? That's the thing of racing, it's tactics and stuff like this, but with these weekly time trials, it's just full gas. People don't care if they get dropped. As long as they push, push hard, they're willing to give it all. But in a race, people sit on and wait for the sprint. But this is harder than racing. I've never, ever done any races this hard because people in races, it's tactics, it's teammates, etc. This bunch, there's no teammates. It's just everyone goes full gas. So it's the best workout you can get. Um, we're flying up the hill here, and this is where you got to. You always want to pay attention to what's up the road. You never, never put your head down, otherwise you might crash into a car coming down or a rider coming up. So you just always pay attention, and you want to close that gap as soon as possible. So now, with we had maybe 50 riders at the start, 40 riders at the start, and there's only four of us. There's only four of us left. All right. We've got yellow socks, orange helmet, white socks. Nicole Nargo on the right. We're flying up this mountain here. It's good training. And we've sort of rec recovered a little bit now. The pace has dropped a little bit off. You can sort of see us slowing down a little bit. Yellow socks clicks into a big gear just to give the legs a bit of a break. But soon the cadence will come up again. Now orange helmet's in the front. Now it's, now it's coming up again. Now it's coming up. The speed's coming up. The power's coming up. And we're flying again back on the home straight. Back on the home straight. Luckily, let's slow down a bit. Let me catch my breath a little bit. 
And uh, so you can see that right in front, hairy legs. Do you need to shave your legs as a cyclist? You don't need to shave your legs at all. It's not part of the cult. It's not part of the cult. But you don't you don't have to shave legs. It's optional. All right. You're female or male, hairs, it's personal preference. But you don't need to be shaving your legs to be fast. Because you can see this guy here. He climbs fucking fast. He's like 13 minute or close to sub 13 for, for Norton's. Hairy legs. You don't need to shave your legs if you don't want it. Why do cyclists shave their legs? Oh, it's a bit more of the click. It's the culture. Maybe massage is easier. Um, what else is easier? If you, get to, if you do have a crash, not, not having hair in there, heals up. But it's mainly probably massage and, and the culture. But you don't have to shave your legs if you don't want it. All right? You can still fucking smash bergs with hairy legs as we sit here. So two eyes in the front, and I'm just, I'm suffering right now. Closing all those gaps has hurt my little legs, and white socks gets in the front, and I, I can't hold that wheel. I feel that acceleration, I'm like, nah, I'm outie. I'm just gonna sit on a bit. Try and catch my breath, get my heart rate down a little bit, but uh, I know danger's coming up. Because we can see orange helmet's having a bit of recovery. I can tell his watch is about to go, here we go. He's, out the saddle, just change your legs a little bit, and he's going to tack across. Now he's tacking across to try and get back up to white socks, and I'm just dropping the wheel here. I'm dropping the wheel. I really should be hanging on here, and uh, boom, yellow socks, high ca cadence, 120 cadence, big power, probably 800, 900 watts. He closes that gap effortlessly, didn't he? Got popped. I got popped off the cob. I got dropped. I hesitated. Those who hesitate masturbate. So I, I'm sitting in the back here masturbating by myself. <laughs> Because I hesitated. I should have closed that gap straight away. I'm just in my head going, oh, I don't know if I want this. you just got to close your thoughts and follow the fucking wheel. Do not hold the wheel. And now I'm trying to get back on, but it's too late because the road's flattened off. We're doing probably 30, 35k an hour. And if you've got three guys versus one on the flat road swapping off, you're never, got, never ever going to get back on. It's just, you're just not. So I've just made a massive mistake there. I didn't hold the wheel. And when the gap opened, I didn't close it. And when the rider went around me, I didn't jump back on. So you just you got to just chew your stem for maybe 10 seconds just to get hold that wheel, get back on, get that draft. Otherwise, this is what happens. You get dropped. So this is where you mentally you have to just harden the fuck up and just, just bite the bullet, man, for a few more seconds and just hold that fucking wheel. Otherwise, you're going to get popped. So this is how we ride climbs. This is how you do it fast. Close the gap straight away. Hold the wheel above all. Um, and just always pay attention, you know, monitor where your front wheel is, look at what's coming up the road, don't have your head down, and be aggressive mentally in your head, but also you want to stay relaxed, because if you get too aggressive in your head, you might shut your breathing down, and if you shut your breathing down, you can't get your power, because the power comes from the oxygen, power doesn't come from your muscles, it comes more from the oxygen, and, and cadence, so, otherwise people with 100 kilo muscle legs would be smashing us up here, but the power comes from the blood, from the oxygen, so we've done 13, 10, 13, 11. So this is a, a sub, a mid, mid 13s up Norton Summit here today. And uh, it was a good day for it. Good training. This is the best training you can do, really. Just people going full gas. Full gas. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, let us know down below.